some on the floor of the third floor of the Museum of Ludwig. And this reminds me of what you're seeing right now, a black and white cat biting a darker colored cat. So, Oliver, Luna, mad. This is the reason why I came here today because Picasso was here. This was October 30th, Sorry, not Picasso's. We're going to go see some Monet's and some other interesting artwork right down the street. Right down there where those flags are located is another museum. So Judy, you're in luck. They do have Segway tours. There they are doing their Segway tour. Segway. So here's a better view of how narrow these houses are when they front onto the street. The white one is, says it was built in 1721 and then 1954 it was, it was rebuilt. And in 1974 they, nope, sorry. So what you see here is what's called the history house. I'm going to pan out a little bit and let you, you think what you think it is. The symbolism, what do you think those are? Those look like broken Nazi symbols, cross. Here's a better view of the, the house, how narrow they are and the street going past it. Um, and like I said, 1721 when it was first built, rebuilt again in 1914, and they re rebuilt a third time in 1954. So this is the square that I was at 
last night or late yesterday afternoon big difference here on a Sunday morning in the city of Cologne this is an interesting little pub look at the size of those beer barrels man that's all that and then you see over here I can get it to work those are huge wine casks that they have there's a gentleman coming This is a Monet. It's of a lily pond. And in the 1880s, Monet lived in a location called Gibbonry. Had a large farm and everything like that, and ponds and lilies. And this is where he did hundreds and hundreds of his paintings relating to a lily pad. And it's not so much about painting the lily pad with all its color but it's what is the variety of the light and the atmosphere that he sees as he's painting. It's pretty interesting. It's a Monet. This painting by, um, blah, blah, blah. this painting I'm gonna show you next is from Augustus Ronier. And it's called Banks of the Sand at Rosilli. Kelsey, I think you showed me this artist one time, the painter. Now this painting really uses light to throw you off. So I'm gonna let you read what it says. Honestly, when I first looked at this thing, I just saw the sunlight. But then, those pictures, those roses, those flowers, all jump out at you. Well, I finally found the Van Gogh here at this museum. And it was made in 1888. It's called Drawbridge at Aries. So in the province, Vincent van Gogh sought to have his own Japan, the land of his, of his artistic dreams. What he in fact found there were months that reminded him of his home in the Netherlands. Now the Rubens are on the second floor and they're closed for viewing at this time. So I'm not gonna be able to go up and see that, but at least we saw the, the Van Goghs and the Monets. So we're not gonna be able to see the Rubens. So the interesting thing about this Monet, it's a forgery. And they didn't find out about it until 2008 here at Cologne. 
So it was done at the same time during Monet's own lifetime, but it's a total forgery. And it appeared in England in 1920. And they even had, had it been based on an early color reproduction of the original, which appeared in 1903 in an English publication. So if you look at it, and you're not going to be able to tell with me video, but if you're here in person, you can see that how did they know it was forgery? The first indication was the unusual amount of drawing that was done before applying the paint. The clouds and all the little trees and everything, there was a lot of drawings on the background before it was painted. And these type of peculiarities or something unusual was was not quite unlike Monet, but the use of the spacula, which was employed here over large areas. The trickery was at play can be seen from the thin coat of brown paint that's been applied to the back and folded sides of the canvas. This is an old forger's trick designed to simulate the coat of grime that builds up with age. So, this is a fake Monet. So, here we see a Peter Paul Rubens, Juno and Arcus. Sixteen ten. This is St. Almond's Church. It's the oldest parish in Cologne, and it was bombed during World War II. You can see there's no roof. The windows are all gone and everything. So it's a memorial now for World War II. And inside, they have statues of the mourning parents. And this is for all the soldiers that were lost during World War II and never came home. Stained glass windows. Here I'm at the Hard Rock Cafe in Cologne. And just like that, there comes the Harley. Little well, American flag on it. So it is what it is. But anyway, I'm gonna go in and have lunch. So what you have here is the Hard Rock of Cologne. There's only three in the whole country of Germany. One's in Munich, one's in Berlin, and one in Cologne. So we're gonna go and have lunch. Messine is a soccer player, a very famous one. He says, Come in and get messy. So let's see. So I'm inside Cologne Hard Rock Cafe. They have Jimi Hendrix and his guitar, one of his guitars, Jackson Brown, Rolling Stone. 
Keith Richards, guitar, the father of Jack Sparrow, and it's just your typical bar rock cafe. Yeah, Bruce Springsteen, any American dude. 